Are you buying into the flu fear-mongering propaganda? If so, then the CDC's media campaign is working and being effective against you. This is a CDC PowerPoint presentation given in 2004 by the then Director of Media Relations at the CDC, Glenn Norwak, PhD. And you can see here in the title, the point of the presentation was to create a recipe for fostering public interest and high vaccine demand. And basically what they want to do is create a fear-mongering scenario where they keep putting the flu in front of you and keep telling you it's so bad, it's so bad, you're going to die, you're going to die, go get your flu vaccines. And so how has that worked? Since 2004, it seems like every year there's a new bird flu, swine flu, uh, some sort of flu strain that's going to end the world. And you can see here, this is what they suggested. You want to create significant media interest by using words like very severe, more severe than last year or past years, deadly. Then you want to continue with reports from talking head health officials and media that shows the flu being severe and shows pictures of children and families suffering from the flu to get you emotional, to get you feared, to go get your flu vaccine. Well, there's been many questions around the office and around just out in public lately about what are natural methods that we could use, antiviral methods to help fight the flu if it were to uh, impact us. And many people ask about elderberry. So let's dive into the research on elderberry and its antiviral activity. Here is a study in the Journal of International Medical Research, 2004, doing a randomized study of the efficacy and safety of oral elderberry extract against influenza A and B. What you can see is they'll say, elderberry has been used in folk medicine for centuries to treat flu, colds, and sinusitis. This study investigated the efficacy and safety of elderberry syrup for treating influenza A and B. They did it in 60 live patients, age 18 to 54. And what they found was the elderberry syrup relieved symptoms on average four days earlier and use of rescue medication was significantly less in those receiving the elderberry than placebo treatment. So this showed effectiveness, antiviral effectiveness against influenza A and B, and showed a shorter span of sickness or a shorter sick period versus placebo. In this study, they gave patients 15 milliliters of elderberry four times a day for five days. So that's kind of a, a rubric to use for treatment or application. In conclusion, elderberry extract seems to offer an efficient, safe, and cost-effective treatment for flu. If we go to a different study, we can see here in the journal Phytochemistry in 2009, elderberry flavonoids bind to and prevent H1N1 infection in vitro. And so the, the meat of this study here, flavonoids from elderberry extract bind to flu virion, virions, which are virus particles, and when bound, they block the ability of the virus to infect the host cell. That sounds pretty antiviral to me. The H1N1 inhibition activities of elderberry flavonoids compare favorably to the known anti-influenza activities of Tamiflu and amantadine. So basically, this study is saying that elderberry matched up favorably with Tamiflu and amantadine. So instead of exposing yourself to the drugs and the side effects that come with them, it's worthwhile to try the elderberry first. Now, this study in 2011 looked at not only is elderberry effective against flu, but it also said sometimes when you get the flu, you then get a super infection with bacteria that can lead to severe pneumonia. So how does elderberry do against gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria? Well, we'll skip to the bottom here. Elderberry liquid extract, possesses antimicrobial activity against both gram-positive bacteria like strep pyogenes, which is a virulent form of strep, and gram-negative bacteria like Bronchamella catarralis. It also displayed an inhibitory effect on the propagation of human pathogenic flu virus. So again, elderberry is active against flu viruses, another study saying it's effective. And then lastly, we've had some questions about, well, doesn't um, elderberry drive inflammation in the body. And so this study from the European Cytokine Network in 2001 investigated uh, the pro-inflammatory properties of elderberry. 
So they start by saying, yes, elderberry has antiviral properties, especially against flu virus. They say up to 10 different strains it's effective against. Double-blind placebo-controlled studies have shown that it reduces the flu symptoms three to four days sooner than, than if you don't take it. And so now they said, is it pro-inflammatory? And what they found is, yes, it is. So elderberry is going to increase the pro-inflammatory cytokines, which are basically chemicals that cause inflammation or activate the immune system against infection. So yes, that is the mechanism of elderberry syrup. It boosts your, your response to infection. The most striking increase was noted in tumor necrosis factor alpha production. So there's been questions about, well, is elderberry safe for autoimmune disease and inflammatory disease? So here's where we go from a population study to the specific individual in front of us. And when we're talking about a specific individual, if that person has autoimmune disease, especially if they're having a flare, or they have an inflammatory disease like ankylosing spondylitis or something of that nature, then maybe elderberry wouldn't be good for that person because elderberry effectively drives up the inflammatory process. Well, that person is already inflamed. They're, they, they walked in inflamed. So you don't wanna dump gas on that fire. So in those people, you probably wanna address the, the viral infection in some other anti-inflammatory strategy um, not with elderberry. So there's things like um, lauric acid and, and um, berberine and many other herbs that you can use from an antiviral perspective. Another question is, is elderberry safe for children? Again, children always will require less of a dose than adults. So you'd want to, it dep you'd want to think about the child involved. Is that child already dealing with autoimmune disease? Is that child dealing with a different inflammatory condition? Then you probably don't want to use elderberry in that case. Of course, this is not intended to be medical advice. It's education on elderberry. When considering using elderberry, please speak with your doctor.